minimum. Man, I ain't got 750 to pay. All right, Clint Eastwood as the lovable racist with a big ass gun. Yeah, this is a cross between Archie Bunker and Dirty Harry. Get off of my lawn. Oh, I know. Throughout, I mean, one of his biggest lines in the movies. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you could have had a dog do this role for half of the movie. <laughs> yeah, no. And there's even a part in the movie where he's like, a Jew, a black guy, and a Chinese guy walk into a bar, and the bartender says, get the f. <laughs> and, and you know, but that sums up his character up pretty, pretty well right there. I don't think he hates everybody. He just doesn't give a f He don't give a damn, you know, how you feel about him or what he says. And the funny thing to me is I found this to be more of a comedy. This is actually an anti-Dirty Harry movie. At least that's the way I saw it. It's almost kind of like an apology for his entire career of playing these revenge-getting guys. And he's here's this guy who really should get revenge and you want to feel it, but you're not quite sure how he's going to go about it. Which is odd because this is a very violent film in and of itself, but it's saying, you know, this isn't always the best way to solve problems. Yeah, uh, Clint Eastwood, is, we say he's a level race, racist. He's Walt Kowalski. He, I mean, he's, yeah, he's pissed. His wife is dead. He's been through a lot of shit through Vietnam and Korea. Now, I'm, okay, Korea, I'm sorry. And now you got these people who move next door. Well, he, all he sees are slanty eyes <laughs> next door and he, do, and he does not like it. However, when trouble starts brewing next door, when his gang starts harassing these two kids, he can't help but break down and try to help them out. Yeah, he starts warming to these people yeah. as human beings in a way he can't even do with his own children, who admittedly are ungrateful bastards. One of the things that doesn't really work, or at least not for me, was the acting performance of the people next door. B. Vang. B. Vang, that's an actor. The, that uh, Eastwood's character first meets, but because he tries to steal his car, but he's only doing it because he's kind of being forced into it by the local Asian gang. Yeah. Uh, and they form this sort of, you know, father-son type of mentor relationship, but that guy's just not very good. I think Clint Eastwood in this movie is awesome. Yes. But everything else I thought was kind of low grade. The only actor who really, you know, kind of stuck in my craw a bit was the priest. All of his jokes work. Any of the throwaway lines feel stiff and awkward. That, that came across to me as like, when you have to go approach somebody who you know is hard to deal with, you're just not looking forward to it. Yeah. You could tell that priest is like, man, I'm a man of the cloth, but I'm about to tell this mother <laughs> you. Okay, so <laughs> what are you peddling today, Padre? Nothing. Well, I drop by and see how you're doing. I haven't seen you in church in a while. Well, now that you've done your good deed, why don't you just take off down the road? I'd really like to talk, Mr. Kowalski. Not in this lifetime, Sonny. Why? Do you have a problem with me, Mr. Kowalski? You don't want to know. No, I do. Well, I think you're an overeducated 27-year-old version who likes to hold the hands of old ladies who are superstitious and promises them eternity. Dude, can Clint Eastwood make a movie where he doesn't call the priest Padre? <laughs> He's been doing it for like 40 years. <laughs> Look, I know we make race jokes all the time, but this is, a, this is a neighborhood. This is a world where everything is race. Clint Eastwood is either telling jokes about race, uh, the people in the neighborhood, the, you have every type of gang there. But this was like Grand Theft Auto neighborhood. He lived <laughs> yeah. In. This had to be like the most pussy gangs I have ever seen oh, in my yeah. life. <laughs> Even that Asian gang who's pushing that kid around. I'm like, if that kid just had like one extra ball, he could take all of them. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about an Asian gang that talks black and they don't even know Kung Fu. <laughs> now, that is not real to me. <laughs> It's still a very, very entertaining movie. It's fun to watch. I just don't think it was great, but I, I could watch it again and be just as entertaining as I was the first time. I think it was great. Uh, this is a full price movie for me. It's not a high full price only because, like I said, there's the, the, it's that one actor in particular. But everything else was so good, including the script, which I thought was wonderful. I think people could pay full price for it, and it's still, with all the flaws, it's still enjoyable enough that at full price, you'll still like it and not feel ripped off. Oh, I give it a full price. I'm going to see it at least a dozen more over, over the course of the next year of my life. It's just a really, really great film. The other thing is that some of these uh, stereotypes... I mean, we, we went to the 70s for some of them. Like, the black gang. Who says hunky anymore? The black gang is like, <laughs> hey, look at this hunky white man coming. I mean, it was, it was almost like Clint Eastwood was like, I'm a racist from the future. <laughs> I've come to kill you all, you black motherfucker. <laughs> I mean, that, yeah. hey baby, I was making like Fat Albert the game to be out there. Hey baby, what you doing, hunky white man? I don't know, but he looks tougher to me. <laughs> <laughs>